Hey guys, we are live now. So, this will be a very quick live. I am doing like what I have built a couple of weeks. So I have been trying to get some hands on on uh, Jenkins uh, using CACD and trying to do stuff. So have a couple of things that I have learned. So I, I thought I would like to share a few of the things that I have learned. So here we go. Uh, so hope you can see the build there. So uh, this is a very simple application that we have uh, with us. So it doesn't really do anything. Let you see the actual code. Uh, it just gives you, uh, you know, uh, the status of the two numbers. You uh, actually does uh, basically only these operations nothing much so you give it two numbers and uh, you give it the operation what has to be performed on those two and you will be getting the result back uh, the status code actually so so this is what i have used uh, over here you could see uh, this is the entire code is deployed so when you move to the clear branch you can see There is a test folder uh, that I use. Uh, so what uh, CACD is actually like uh, the entire complete flow is from where you start. So basically you have to deploy something for uh, just for a quick demo. I'm just uh, demonstrating to you guys with just a single file. But basically deployment uh, with CACD you could deploy, you know, maybe Django if you have to deploy Flash, you can do that. Or if you want to go with you know, the Node uh, world, you can go with React, you can deploy AngularJS, and a whole lot of stuff you can do. But for a simple uh, you know, demo purpose and for a simple Python script, I think this is uh, the base for uh, what you're uh, trying to accomplish now. So what we're trying to uh, fulfill is that you have a snippet, uh, you have a code, you have a piece of code, uh, you have a test case for that. So once you, uh, once someone pushes the uh, code to QA branch, so what happens is that the build starts. So the build actually triggers when you push something to the QA branch or something is merged to QA branch. Okay, so that is that is basically what happens. And uh, so when the build starts, so you will basically have uh, three stages for uh, at most, uh, most of the pipelines, so what is the build stage and testing and then deploy. So you can add whatever stages you want. You can add uh, steps in between. So I'll just show you the Jenkins uh, file, which kind of has all those steps. So which might be easy for you to grasp it a little. So this is what we call as a Jenkins file, a pipeline uh, syntax. Maybe if you search for Jenkins syntax, this is the first one that will so basically, uh, as I told you, build, test, and deploy. So these are the three main or uh, the most frequently used based on your requirements. Things might change based on what you are trying to accomplish with uh, the deployment, the actual deployment itself. So uh, I haven't done anything much on this part. Uh, we uh, we don't have anything to build like a. Uh, and, you know, maybe uh, React app, which you have to build a, a prod ready uh, index.html you have to generate or index.js you have to generate. Uh, there is uh, no such thing in Python. So uh, I skip that part. And uh, this is the test part. So you just run this uh, test node snippet, which will uh, actually call the snippet.py and do some testing with the single function that we have. And uh, this is something interesting. So, so once the testing is done, so you know that the test has failed or not. Okay. So this has to be another step or you have to have another stage maybe. So once uh, the test is passed, maybe let's say the test, uh, all the test, what you have written is passed and you want to deploy. So you just need a manual intervention. Like I use a particular user or maybe your uh, uh, senior manager or a manager has to approve this. So this build or someone from your you know, team lead or 
someone senior to you has to approve this uh, you know, build or uh, the code that whatever you have written. So you have to have a manual intervention to just deploy. Okay, so uh, you, someone has to go there. So build will be passed till then someone approves. So build will be stopped. So you have to definitely uh, you know, uh, take that up and then uh, someone has to approve it so that the build you know, passes to the next stage. So this is deploying. We actually don't you know, deploy anything since we already pulled the code out of Bitbucket. So we don't do that part as well. So this part is uh, pretty much interesting. So the post is where you put all your, uh, you know, after the entire thing is complete, you need to clean up things. Maybe uh, there might be files which have been created you know, that you might have deleted and those things. So what I've done is, uh, so once that the build is complete for all the three stages, you uh, need to gather the results of it. So uh, this this script will generate an XML file. Uh, I'm not sure why people use XML. I think uh, due to uh, the Java compatibility, maybe. Uh, but uh, anyway, so that is the we use, and uh, even in Python, I, I never used XML with Python. So, so this generates a XML file which outputs uh, the test results. So you might have a three or four tests and it will state whichever has ran or whichever has failed on what, what occasion it has failed and what is there. And uh, this is the test results in a directory that it will look for. Uh, all your test results uh, must be put into test report so that you get all your test results. And uh, this is uh, so if once once this test is passed, right? So success when uh, the build is successful, uh, you run this snippet dot view with these arguments. So this is uh, this is like a command line arguments. You just pass one hundred eighty nine and you the do the add operation. You might get two hundred response. So it is like the positive thing. So both the numbers are present. So first number and second number. And on failure, this is some. Message you can uh, keep it yourself. You could then uh, eventually do that as well. So this is the actual code and the file uh, which is used. So I'll just show you the build, actual build, and how things start. Let's go to QA and show you the test now. So, so this is basic stuff. Uh, you know, whatever you're noticing that you would do, uh, just pass these two values and you know see if uh, 200 you get or 302 or whatever responses you get and this part is important so this xml runner you can pip install it this will generate a xml file which has the uh, test results and it will also uh, you know, display things on your uh, you know, jenkins run itself and you will see the historic runs and whatever the test has passed or failed you will get those status as well so let me quickly, uh, I think the Docker container is still running. So let me see. Okay, I think Docker container is still running. So you may, so uh, this part is uh, actually by, uh, this is not the actual uh, Jenkins. So this one is the familiar UI my, you might have seen. So this is something called as Blue Ocean UI that they have. Uh, no, but uh, I like this one though. Uh, but this this is very simplified form of uh, the actual uh, Jenkins UI itself. So it is pretty simplified and uh, it is mostly the same. All most of the functionality is the same. But you can actually uh, you know see in a good you know, visualization way that how the build is going and how it is starting. So this is how you will, uh, the actual build will start. So the build phase, the test phase. So this is really nice when you use blue ocean, if you see the same uh, in uh, the normal thing, right? So this is like the steps that you have. So you have to manually see the logs uh, and this is really difficult if you want to, uh, you know, just see what, what has been done. So this is a really tough job. So you, this is pretty much uh, easy. Uh, and also this is the approval part that 
I told you about uh, when we used uh, input. So you will get some uh, input deploy or what. So you can just approve it or you can reject it. And the third thing is the unit test. So if you go to a test, so you could see that uh, you have some outputs over here. So test function name and what are the data that has been passed and that these states and uh, what are the status have passed on. So this is our view. You will see or you will evaluate you know, things. So you can also see what are the change, what change made this you know, build. So this, uh, this is something that is very useful. I found to see like what kind of changes that you know, people have uh, you know, made to you know, trigger this build. So this is the basic uh, uh, thing about uh, you know, blue version. So if you go to this view, you could you know see the uh, you know, the test uh, historic test that has been run. So uh, you could see that there 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 have been some failed you know test, which I uh, I am pretty sure that uh, you know some cases you might you know fail. I did this with an uh, intentionally so that uh, you could see like something has failed. I don't want to have everything passed so i just made it up uh, so this is the how you you know i think this is the build that has failed i guess so you could see the logs uh, has happened uh, you could see the entire logs here as well so this is completely running on docker uh, i will just post this image on docker as well if you want to use it i just still need to uh, do some work around uh, you know this docker part since you know Python and other uh, things, which is essential as uh, when you have the official image, you don't have those. So I'll just make sure that I'll add and uh, I'll build a new image and uh, which which can be shareable and which you can start you know, running. So so this is I think it is still running. If you see, uh, it is running for more than ten hours now. So. so I have used Docker Compose for uh, you know making this container up. Since you have to have a volume, otherwise if you stop the container, right, you will lose all your data. So I just made the volume to kind of keep track of all the uh, you know, changes that you have done, all the plugins that you install, and the users that you create, and everything will be stored uh, just there. So make sure you put it in a volume uh, place. So i think that's uh, that's all i want to share in this part so there is a very good documentation you can go through for uh, you know, by, uh, pipeline syntax you know, there's an exhaustive list of uh, things that you can do with uh, you know jenkins it is not just cacd uh, you have to deploy you can test it in pretty much any way you want and get user inputs so i'll just show you the user input thing so build with parameters so this is another build where you let's say if you have 10 machines and you want to deploy it in like three machines or you just want to deploy in linux uh, you know machines alone you want to deploy it in uh, windows machines so uh, you might be wondering like why mac is here so aws has just announced uh, i think it's been a year now for i'm not pretty sure but the mac has been announced you can uh, if you have the budget you can go for you know mac os as well on your uh, on your cloud, AWS cloud is uh, no, providing that. So once you click on build, so you might you know, start this build. So once you go to Jenkins, and this is the second one. So I just started this build. So this is like uh, the input that a user should uh, you know type in. So let's say I just type my name. Uh, you know, we should continue or we should start the build and you could ask for different questions like where do you want to deploy uh, do you want to deploy the master branch or QA or you know whatever things that you want you can just have it as an options and uh, you can uh, just deploy so when you click on proceed it uh, asks you for the config path which path to take and uh, you know these are some uh, dummy values that I have so you don't have to do anything you can click on proceed so once you do that uh, you will just complete the build uh, you know whatever the interactions that you had uh, you know it would be on your uh, you know logs whoever has made the approval so this is my username so this is how you will uh, you know face things in the uh, 
know if someone is approved uh, approving this build and you don't know who is that and it is really difficult to you know trace back so this gives you a really cool option you know to whom over us you know approve this uh, part so uh, we don't have any test for this build actually so there is no change since we ran it again so if there is a change and uh, you know things ran then you will see some logs in the change Otherwise, you will just see, you know, if you run manually again, you will just see, you know, the build starting and things. But you should always, you know, uh, manual thing can be done. But uh, so these are the runs that I have uh, you know, for this part. If you see the same logs would be here, but it is pretty much in a organized and uh, in a good uh, way to visualize things. So it is on the blue ocean. You can also uh, see the entire log as well. So if you want to go to this build and if you want to see the entire output in a stretch so this is the entire you know, output in a stretch you could you know see what has been done and which part has done work. so you can uh, just view this as well for any kind of future references you may definitely use that so that is it for this video i think you might have got some idea about uh, what is jenkins and why we use it and what is the sole purpose of it? If you have any questions, you know, drop it in the comments. And if you want to more, uh, we have you need something else uh, to be worked around with Jenkins. So please let me know. I can uh, work on that as well. And I'll make up another video or another live maybe. So thank you guys for joining. See you in the next one.